Celtics fan. 111 to 105. Critical moment in this game. 637 to play in the fourth. Grant Williams, who did not play in game one, hits a three to make it 96-87. What happens next? The Heat go on a 24 to 9 run after that moment. And that's the difference in this game. They were down by as many as 13 in game one, came back to win. Down by as many as 12 in this one, came back to win. Jimmy Butler, he's him. 27 points, eight rebounds, six assists, three steals, two blocks. The guy fills up the stat sheet. Then how about Caleb Martin coming off the bench? 25 points. I mean, stand up for Caleb Martin. Four rebounds, a steal, a block, bam, out of Bayou. One assist shy of a triple-double. 22 points, 17 rebounds. Duncan Robinson giving him 15. Jason Tatum got his 34 points, 13 rebounds, eight assists, but Jalen Brown did not. He was not good in this game. 16 points on seven of 23, including one of seven from beyond the arc. Uh, look, you, you can think the Celtics might come back and make this a series. I, I think it's over. Miami's moving on to the, to the NBA Finals. They're, they're going to the NBA Finals. This team is, they are playing at an elite level led by Jimmy Butler. And if you're going to chirp at Jimmy Butler, you better bring it when it matters the most because that did not that's not what happened in Boston. That's not what happened when the Celtics start to chirp at Jimmy Butler. Let's get some instant analysis. Welcome in my man, NBA analyst. CBS Sports, one of the best. Tim Doyle, Tim, that game was incredible watching that down the stretch. Take you back to the moment, 6.37 to play. Grant Williams makes a three, gets in the face of Jimmy Butler. He makes a layup. They go on this massive run to close out the game, and it equals a victory. Your instant analysis, your instant reaction is what? Wow, wow, wow. You know, we saw it in game number one where it was a dominant third quarter, a 46-point third quarter for the Miami Heat, and just thought to yourself, game, game two, get up again. Can't happen again. It didn't happen again in the third quarter. It happened in the fourth quarter. 36 to 22 in the first quarter. An utter domination. It's interesting that Grant Williams was talking smack, talking smack to the wrong guy because then he got matched up with Jimmy Butler. And you knew it. I knew it, Akeem. The American people knew it. Grant Williams had no chance of stopping Jimmy Butler, but it wasn't just him. He got help. Great performances off the bench. Caleb Martin, 25 big points. Duncan Robinson made some big shots. And who's Gabe Vincent? I'll tell you who Gabe Vincent is. Made his free throws, made an enormous jump shot in this game. Boston not once, but twice had double-digit leads at home first two games and threw up all over themselves. I, I am incredibly impressed by this Miami team. Uh, they don't have Tyler Hero. Lost him in game one against the Bucks to a broken hand. Perhaps they'll get him back for the NBA Finals, which now they're two wins away from getting there. When you see what Jimmy Butler does in the playoffs, this guy just does everything, right? I mean, look at the stats. Look at his stat line. Steals, assists, rebounds. Obviously, he's scoring the basketball blocks. He's taking charges late in the game. I mean, this is a guy you want on your ball club, and he continues to play at elite level. What are you seeing from Jimmy Butler right now? Yeah, when I just think of Jimmy Butler, I think of two words, old school. You know, 27 points, how many threes did he make? Zero. I mean, you got to make a three tonight, and that's not his game. Yeah, hey, I've said this about basketball. I think it's hard for people to really understand. The guys are so much more talented now, top to bottom, than they were when Magic and Bird and when you and I used to love basketball when we were kids. But the game is actually easier to play. If you have a high basketball IQ, and Jimmy's got a really high basketball IQ on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively, the game is so slow. He's playing at his own pace right now. And then if they're able to keep it somewhat close, well, he's able to flip that switch and dominate. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, Boston needs their superstars to step up. We talked about Jalen Brown and his struggles. Jason Tatum it didn't make a field goal in the fourth quarter. And... I think that he has to realize sometimes I need to be selfish for the good of my team. Meaning, I know Al Horford and Grant Williams. And Mark, I need to be shooting. Me, myself. I need to be taking every key shot. He shot kind of a fast three and got fouled. He went to the free throw line. Like He needs to keep that aggressiveness that he had in periods one through three. And then he just did not have in the fourth quarter. But Hakeem, I remember drinking tequila with Jimmy Butler when he was on the Bulls. He averaged two points a game his first year in the NBA. He wasn't a guy that left early. 
junior college to Marquette, paid his dues, earned it like you did, Akeem, in those small markets that no one, remember you were chasing those squirrels up and down the tree? That's what Jimmy Butler did. He earned it the hard way. Yeah, Tobias Harris over me? I'm going to keep saying that. Tobias Harris over me? Like, and you're right. He got help like Gabe Vincent undrafted Duncan Robinson undrafted Caleb Martin undrafted this team coached by Eric Spolstra and look I know he's won titles but you could argue that this is one of his greatest coaching jobs we've seen. Uh, I mean you know he won titles with LeBron James. Right, that's prime. my point. Gosh you know it's like no I mean th this is clearly his best coaching job. You know, they may lose this series, and, and they got to the finals in they the bubble. They're losing this series. Come on. The Heat aren't losing this series. They're not losing this series. Come on. Boston's winning a game in Miami. All right, so fair. So Boston. So this thing's going to go six or seven. This thing's not wrapping up in five games. There's no way. I mean, Boston had double-digit leads. They just can't figure out a way. I mean, tonight, you know, they go 10 of 35 from three. Can't make a shot. Jalen Brown doesn't step up. Um... No, but it, the, the Heat have been disrespected. No other way to say it. Check out the backboards there. Double-digit offensive rebounds to, for the Miami Heat. And Bam Adebayo had a massive offensive rebound and a huge putback in this game. Um, it, it's just been a, a wild game of swings. And you almost felt the came like the pressure. The pressure got to Boston. Tatum put his head down, just charged over Jimmy Butler like... They started like reverting back to like what you do in like squirt ball or peewee ball. Like just put your head down and run over people. Like, dude, you're in the NBA. You can't do that. Like pull up and shoot a jump shot, like sidestep, Euro step. Like I thought Boston really folded under the pressure in Miami. They have done this all playoffs long. Go back to the Bucks series. Check out the games they won in those games. Down 15, down 13. They have just figured out a way, and it came at the end of the day to think this is an eight seed. That is like mind blown. Yeah, they're just not your typical eight seed. That's the thing. Like I, I they, even even the Heat when you ask them, like, they don't care about the eight seed stuff. I get it, but it's like this is a typical eight seed in the NBA playoffs. Um, when you look at this Celtics team, and Joe Mazzulla is in his first year as a head coach, so clearly being out coached in, in these first two games. Jason Tatum, though, is your guy. He, he scores a record 51 to close out the 76ers. And then, as you mentioned, game one, zero field goals made in the fourth quarter. Game two, zero field goals made in the fourth quarter. I, is this fatigue? What, what is this? Is, is Miami doing so much to disrupt him? Or is this perhaps the lazy analysis I'm giving? It's fatigue. It's, uh, he's tired. He's but everybody's tired. This is the NBA play. This is the, this is the, the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I think that other people got to help Jason Tatum out. Um, you know, he didn't have one other guy that scored more than 16 points, and that was Jalen Brown, who got 16 points on 23 shots. You know, we'll talk all we want about Jimmy Butler, but Bam Adebayo had 22 points, 17 rebounds. Caleb Martin stepped up. Who led Boston in assists? Who was getting Jason Tatum the basketball? Jason Tatum led him in assists with eight. So clearly he's just not getting enough help. Does this fall on him? Well, when you lose at home and you're the superstar, you know, people are going to point at you. But, yes, he needs to be better in the fourth quarter. He needs to be more aggressive. He needs to get the ball. But, like, he can't pass to himself. Miami went zone. He, he slid it in the lane, gave it off. They got a dunk. Like, uh, other people have to make him better and, and, and play better as well. So, really disappointing if you're the Celtics. This has been such a weird playoffs because I know that you're giving Miami a lot of love. But they lost the playing game to the Hawks, which seems like six months ago in Boston. If you really watch that series against the 76ers, they won four to three. I thought they won six out of the seven games, but instead it went to game seven. And frankly, you know, they had to lay it all in line in game six just to be fortunate to, to walk away with it. So it's been a weird, wacky playoffs. And if you're the Denver Nuggets right now with a 2-0 lead in the Western Conference, ha <laughs> ha. The Joker, Michael Malone, they got to be sitting really chilly because everybody, including myself, thought the Celtics were a shoe in Going into the series, Akeem, they were minus 500 and now find themselves in a 2-0 hole. Well, you know what Denver and Miami have in common, right? They've not lost a game at home, and that's where this series is headed, to Miami. 5-0 at home this postseason. Game three Sunday 
on South Beach. What are your expectations? What are the adjustments the Celtics got to make? Because they got to get a game when they go to Miami. Yeah, they had to get a couple of games and they went to Philadelphia too, you yep. know, because Hart won game one and they came back in one game three and then obviously they won game six. So uh, they've made it really difficult on themselves. There, there's no doubt about it. So, you know, um, it'd be interesting to see what the spread's going to be in game number one. I came there with 10 tonight. I know. It was ridiculous. I, I, I wrote an article for Sportsline. I go, I think Boston's going to win, but I mean, 10? I mean, that was like crazy. Meanwhile, they're up the double digits in the second half and they just. Absolutely give that game away. But that is a huge playoff line. Ten in a playoff game. I think they'll be favored again. I think they'll be two and a half on the road. So you think it's over? I, I think Boston still is the better team, the more balanced team. If you want to jump in live right now, you're never going to get better series odds. And, and, and they have to go out there and win game number three. Because if they fall behind 3-0, well, this series is over. And the NBA the NBA is going to be crying. You know what the NBA wants, Akeem? They want yes. Lakers Celtics. Yes, they yes. do. You know what they don't want? They don't want Heat Nuggets. No, no. And usually the NBA gets what it wants. Uh, it's trending in the wrong direction for them right now. Yeah, yeah, but we could, we could. Um, I get it at the story about Lakers and Celtics, and they're oh, both no, no, tied stop. with 17 stop titles, stop. and one stop. takes the lead. But then you have Nikola Jokic does not get the MVP in the year they leads them to the finals. Jimmy Butler looking to win them a title. They're, that's great storylines either way. Okay. No. Great storylines no. either way. No, 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 no. Joker's Fine. a storyline. Joker's a storyline. The Heat. I don't know. Get excited. The Heat are moving on. It's over. Clip it off. The Heat are winning this series. It's over. See ya. We're done talking. We, don't, we ran out of time. It's good to see ya. That was good stuff. Heat dominating the Boston Celtics through the first two games of the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, not dominating, but they've come back from double-digit deficits. 13 in Game 1, 12 in Game 2. They've won four straight against Boston. Um, that's going back to the regular season. But what a difference that moment was. 6.30 to play. Grant Williams makes a three, gets in the face of Jimmy Butler. They go on a 24-9 run to close out the game to take a 2-0 series lead. Live coverage continues here on CBS Sports HQ. Back out to Boston Celtics head coach Joe Mazzulla at the podium.